here. I think the meat of the presentation is going to be in the breakout rooms, which we're going to do at about 6.10 to 6.15. We're going to learn about the different pieces of curriculum in each of the buildings and each of the different grade levels. We'll take some questions and answers. We've got a survey for you to fill out at the end as well, and we'll adjourn about 7.15. So since we know your time is valuable, we want to share some highlights of what's going to be going on this evening and what you might hear about in each of the different rooms. For example, you might hear a little bit about Wonders Balanced Literacy, which is our K-5 ELA program that we adopted last year. The EMC Windows and Mirrors in grade six, so if you have grade six students, you'll hear about that. Our Envisions Math program, which is a K-6 through six curriculum. Science Inquiry Resources, and in science we have inquiry-based lessons and as well as reading materials so that students are actually acting like many scientists and doing hands-on experiments. In the upper elementary, we've got our new STEAM and digital literacy program, so STEAM, science, technology, engineering, oh. art, and math combination. In lower elementary, we've got our Focus K2. And we're also going to talk about um, our instructional technology put together a great flyer for you to take home which is the homeschool connection for our technology component that links most of our curriculum for the students to be able to use it at home and at school. So I also want to share with you very briefly some homeschool connections, which will give you an opportunity to become more engaged with your child's learning. First, I wanted to make you aware of our new Everything Teaching and Learning at Abington Facebook page. And this is a glimpse or a snapshot into what your kids are doing during the day, what their routines are, the excitement, the activities, the lessons, and the events that are occurring within the classroom. Um, this is a pre-K through 12, so if you have kids at different grade levels, you'll be able to see some of the different things going on. So I'm going to try and get into people's classrooms um, this year in every different grade level and subject, and teachers are always willing to share information as well. Second, the Massachusetts Department of Education has this great resource page, which is in the middle here, that I wanted to share with you. This is a family-friendly guide to the standards. So you can go right to the website. You can take a look at the different types of standards that your kids are learning and what we're using in the school so that they learn the different skills associated with what we're doing for curriculum instruction and assessment. It also provides opportunities for you to engage with your child in terms of asking questions. If you're out in the grocery store and you want to ask some math questions, they give you some tips and tricks on how to do that, but also how you can talk to the teacher about different curriculum items going on within, within the school. And third, we're joined tonight by the Abington Educational Foundation and Alexandra Yanni is going to present just really briefly. They are such a great partner for us within the school system and a really important um, piece of Abington. So, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk on behalf of Abington Education Foundation. Um, if you're unaware of what we are, we're a nonprofit that supports the Abington Public Schools K through 12. 
Um, we are separate from your regular PTO. We uh, raise funds by having various fundraising events, such as our Parents' Night Out event that will be hosted this Saturday night at Players at 7 o'clock. We would love for everyone in here to come and bring a friend or two or three with you. Um, the more money we raise, the more money goes back to your child's education in the form of curriculum development. Uh, we provide teachers in the Aberdeen Public Schools with educational grant money for them to bring in stuff that normally we are unable to fulfill within our school budget. So we're supporting the teachers, we're supporting the schools by enhancing our child's education. Um, so we can only do this in partnership with you. So it would be great to have your support when um, we host these events. If you're unable to attend the events, we'd always take a donation, um, or raffle items, or just support with sharing our events throughout the community. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Okay, next bit of business. We're going to go into breakout sessions. And from for the next about five minutes or so, I'm going to have you walk to different breakout sessions. Beaverbrook Elementary School, grades K through two, you're going to be in the seminar room. So all the rooms, when we go out, we're going to go out this door, and you can make a right and then a left. So right and then a left, and we'll be going to the middle school section. Woodsdale for grades three and four, you're going to be upstairs in the library. Grade five, you're going to be in room 1122 in the middle school. Grade six, in room 1112 in the middle school. And here you're going to learn about the different types of curriculum that your students are learning and the different types of instruction. We'll have a question and answer session toward the end. And then we're going to adjourn. So if you're interested in knowing where these rooms are, because it is a big building, here's a map. Um, so we are, we are tucked way in the top right. So you're going to walk down the hallway that you came in. And you will see there's a TV out there that has this map on it, and people will be out there to guide you which direction to go. So you'll see the seminar room for Beaver Brook. There are a bunch of tables out there with some curriculum materials and reading materials. I think that one will be a little bit obvious. And for those of you going to grades five and six, you can turn right down the hallway, and you can see where the rooms are, and, some, and the library room is upstairs. We, um, I want to remind you to feel free to sign in once you're in your rooms. Grab, grab a clever handout so you know how to get your kids logged on at home. And also please take a survey for us. We'd love to have your feedback on curriculum night and what you liked and some suggestions for next year. So again, I want to thank everybody for coming. We really appreciate it. It's a very exciting night for us because it's what our kids do every day. It's our, what our teachers and administrators are involved with every day. So if you have any questions, um, we will be outside. Happy to direct you. Thank you. Have a great evening.
app as well. So we'll turn around and give you a wave. We'll start with Lori Gover, who's taking pictures for our school picture page. Sorry, and Adrian, folks. Adrian Whalen, our reading specialist, Title I coordinator as well. Kelly DeSantis, first grade. Miriam Danikis, first grade. Rebecca Stutzman, first grade. Jackie Murphy, first grade. Christine Hoyt, kindergarten. So we're very happy to have him here with us tonight. So tonight we're going to have a brief overview of some of the curriculum programs that we use at Beaverbrook School. It will encompass both academic and non-academic areas. <laughs> So we'll spend a little bit of time on ELA and what that is, English Language Arts. When you leave today on your way up, bottom desk, we hope you will take a handout that explains it in more detail for you. Thank you. We'll spend a little bit of time on math. So as you probably know, kindergarten, first, and second grade spend the bulk of our time on developing competent readers, because reading lets you do everything. We'll spend some time on Focus K2, a little bit of time on social-emotional learning, and then as you went by in the hallway, you will have a materials review and staff will be out there to answer questions about the materials and so you can see some of them yourself. So we'll first talk a little bit about ELA and what we're using this year. As many of you know, last year... Last year, we uh, had piloted the year before and last year we had implemented Wonders Balanced Literacy as our curriculum program. Now a curriculum program is just a program from a company. The curriculum itself is what we all do with the program. So that's a little bit of a difference for you. How it is different from previous years is way back in the olden times, we did a lot of whole group instruction. But we've evolved over time as everything does. And we do a balance of whole group, small group, partner, individual, whole group again. And that's what the big difference is. And that we have different activities for different students. So an example would be a word work. It could be a dice game, but we have all the vowels on an orange blocks and all the other letters on different colors. And they roll them, and they put them together to make a nonsense word or a real word. And how we decide is, do you think that's a real word? Do you know what that is? In the olden days, app was not a word. Now it's kind of food or it's something on the computer. So the kids would write app if they rolled A, P, and E as a real word. But if they rolled gill, they might not know what it is. So they might write that in the nonsense section because they don't know what the word is. And then when they come together as a whole class, the teacher might ask, what words did you come up with in your nonsense and your real words? And the kids discuss them so they learn vocabulary as well. And that's something you can do at home if you have a lot of blocks and you want to write on them. In our Wonders Balanced Literacy, we have a homeschool connection, which you will start seeing. We send home, typically it's through online, but we can do some papers at times. Uh, we have some assessments that we do because we want to make sure what we're teaching is what your students need and not teach them things they already know. We try our best so that everyone is challenged. We work on reading stamina, so your child might come home and say, I read for four minutes today, and you're thinking, that's it? Well, they sustain their reading for four minutes and 20 seconds. I was in a class the other day. That's how long they did it. Without being distracted by anything else and really looking at what they were reading. It's very hard to do when you have everybody else your age near you. So those are some of the things that we work on in the Wonders program. In the math, each section of math has its own unit. So an example would be geometry. We use Envisions Math, which is a Pearson company. And if we were doing geometry, it depends on the grade again. They could be working on attributes. So that is, does a shape change its shape if its color is different? We know, but kids, that's a problem solving question for them to figure out. Does a shape keep its shape if it's wet? Again, we already know but our kids have to figure it out. And we have different kinds of shapes. Is it still the same shape if it's wooden, foam, metal, or plastic? So that's an example of concept, but the procedural piece would be about this shape has four sides all the same, so it is a square. So that's a little bit about what we do in the math. Again, a homeschool connection. 
you will get some pages from us and you will have an online piece that you can look at. And assessments we do are informal and formal. So there are some formal that are from the program itself and there are some where a staff person goes around with a clipboard and is checking, did you get that, did you get that? I'm listening to hear, did you say that you got more or fewer? Because we're listening for vocabulary as well as the actual skill they're doing. We also have something called social-emotional learning. And again, this is an overview, and I will go into a little more depth. Social-emotional learning, you may have heard about it in a different way. Some people call it parenting skills. Some people call it executive function. Some people call it how to get along in a group. So that is something that we really haven't talked about in past curriculum events, so we wanted to make sure that you know a little bit about it now. Because your kids are probably coming home and talking about it. And you probably want the same language that we're using. And we want the same language that you're using, too. So some of the things we do to help our students acquire skills so they can work in small groups with others, or they can function in a large group, or they can be independent, or they can say what they need when they need it, because we want our kids to be able to request help when they need it, and be able to show about doing if they're providing some help for someone else, and we want kids to have words. Remember when they were really little, and maybe some of you still have really little ones, and you had the tantrum moment, and they're just not able to use their words. Are they only using the word no, or I want that? <coughs> so social emotional learning helps us focus on some of the skills kids need so they can function in the rest of the world, and at home too, and in school. Some of the things we do are morning meeting, which is when we get together, and Woodsdale does the same thing, just at a different level, and we work on getting to know each other and becoming a community. As many of you know at Beaver Brook, we're working on greetings. We shake hands, we might sing a song, we say our names, we might use our own language of English or another language to greet each other. So morning meeting teaches a specific skill in the community of the class. Usually we're sitting on the floor or on the rug. Bucket fillers. Are you a bucket filler? Are you being kind and helpful? Or are you a bucket dipper? Are you making someone's day worse? Our goal is to make someone's day better. And we hope we're making your child's day better by attending school. Calming centers are in our classrooms. If you came at open house, you might have seen some. Or when you come at parent teacher conferences in November, you will see them there as well. It's a trifold in our school with picture cues and some words and some colors. And it has activities in a box kids can do. I'm mad. I want to break something and destroy. They can rip cardboard. I'm sad. I'm feeling kind of blue. Maybe I need to pet my Clifford Beanie Baby doll. I'm frustrated. I just want to crumple something. I can crumple paper. I don't know what I'm feeling, but I need to squish some Play-Doh. I can. Do little timers. So they spend a short time. And there are other things in the box. It's just a way for kids to self-control and self-regulate how they're feeling, put a name or a picture to it, use it for a brief moment, and get back to work. And sometimes that's all they need. It's a coping strategy. We have visual prompts. Here's one right here. Full body listening. Currently working on that now. What are my hands doing? What are my feet doing? What's my head doing? What's my body doing? What's my brain thinking? So right now we're working on full body listening, but we have a lot of posters, and you'll see some out there as well, about visual prompts. We might have pictures of the schedule of what we're doing until the kids learn the words and they can see that, and then they grow up to use agenda books, and then they use Google Calendar, right? <laughs> Social thinking skills, you'll see some of that too. Some of the skills we're working on right now are, am I responding in a big way to a small problem? Am I responding to a medium problem in a medium way? Am I responding to a small problem in a small way? So, example, may I borrow? I take her purse. Big, medium, or small problem. I guess it depends what's inside. <laughs> and she knows me. And I asked her first. So it's a small problem because I didn't wait for the answer. So she could say, you didn't ask me. And instead of having a tantrum saying, you took my purse, she, she could remember, oh, 
She didn't ask me if she could say, I didn't say yes. Oh, you didn't ask. So she did a nice job with a nice small problem at the moment. Small response. We didn't know how it was going to go. It was unplayed. <laughs> But we're working with our kids to know the difference. And that's a really hard concept because it can be a small issue in one setting and a large issue somewhere else. So in a game, losing could be big, medium, or small, depending on your perspective. We're trying to teach kids different ways to respond. Movement breaks. Ms. Bober's working on with our physical therapy staff and with our phys ed staff and our wellness group and some others on having our, one of our hallways, our cross card, have a series of movement activities um, so that kids, if they need a break, can go with someone and they can do a wall push up. Press as hard as you can. It gets some of that energy out. We also have some of these movement breaks by our physical therapists and occupational therapists posted on the walls throughout the school. Anyone can do them. Usually near the bathrooms because that's a waiting area. This gives some kids something to do with their bodies help them feel like they're in control, I have a lot of energy, I don't have much energy, I need to energize myself. So that's all part of our whole school. And we are a mindfulness and growth mindset kind of building. That means we use the words a lot of the time, not yet. It's okay that you don't know this now, you just don't know it yet, but you will. Some kids think they're never going to know it if I didn't know it already. Then why would they come to school, right? Our job should be to challenge everyone at just the right level. And we work on that quite a bit in September, October, because we're getting to know your students. So that's a little bit about our social emotional learning. And we hope we'll take a look at the materials that Kelly Clump left for us in the hall. I'm going to go back. Beaverbrook Technology. We didn't have anything on here last year. We gained a lot. Clever. Clever will lead to what they're using in the middle and high school. Clever is just a digital tool that has one login. So instead of your child needing to type in their first name, their last name, a symbol, in a number, and then type in the password, that's also their name, maybe a few more symbols, a number, and in some random order. It takes them a long time because they don't know the keyboard yet because we're still teaching that. So it's one login for programs we use at school. At school at our age and through Woodsdale, they'll have a little smart code on a card and our computers have cameras. So they hold it up and takes a picture of it and then there they are with their name. For you at home, which you'll be getting next week because we're making sure right now that every student has one including those who just moved in and we're laminating some of our things at school so that we don't rip them by accident. You'll get a direction paper from home and their own code so that once they log in, they're logged into all the programs that school offers. And our staff are working on putting in programs that we want our kids to use. So we use extra math, which is an addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, operations program. So we can link that. So when we go on to our Clever icon, there it is. You can look into see Clever, but you won't be able to log in yet because I haven't given you your child's password. On the Advocate School's <coughs> website, on the left-hand side, it says Clever. Log in there. So that's how we use that. We also want to thank our PTO gave us convertible laptop tablets. What is that? They're the blue computers you see at school when you come in. If we open them all the way, it's a tablet screen. Open it up. It's a laptop typing. Your kids need to do both. We don't know what the future is going to bring. So we want to make sure they can type, make sure they can swipe, and we'll see what comes in the next few years. <laughs> but that's what we did our fun, fun run, and we raised that money, so thank you to everyone. And that's where we got some of that technology. Plus we have other upgrades such as our PC devices, the classroom's got new desktops for that as well. And we do use them. We use publishing on them. Kids practice with games. Um, they can use calculator on it. There are a lot of other ways they can use it. So that's where we are with our technology piece. I'm 
I'm going to skip this for now so that I can have Christine end with a nice wow about Focus K2. We want to talk a little bit about our literacy assessments. How do we know how your kids are doing? And they might come home and say, I was taken. You're like, taken? <laughs> by who? Your children are taken by many people. We have reading specials. We've introduced one person tonight. We have tutors who help with remedial reading. We have paraprofessionals in our school, occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech and language therapists, school psychologists, and their teachers. Behind every homeroom teacher that your child has is a whole team working together to help your child get the most out of their school time. But one of the things we need to do is know how are your children doing on the basic early literacy skills. So they might say, I was taken to be dibbled. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Dibbling is not a verb, but we've made it one. <laughs> Dibbles is our indicators of early literacy success. And there are different categories that we look at. And you will get a letter from me probably mid-October. It's different than a proxy report. <clears throat> that will have your child's starting score for the year and something you can do at home for it. Just to give you an idea of how they started. So we look at things such as nonsense words, which we just talked about a short time ago. Remember, nonsense words are letters put together with sounds that we don't think is a real word, such as, it's hard to think of one now, there are so many that, we, that became words, remember, like app, uh, such as biff. So we want kids to be able to tap out, but it, say it as a word, because when they come to a word they don't know, we want them to try their phonics, their sounding out piece. But we also need them to have memorized words as well, some sight words for fluency. If you're going to sound out the, so you go t, e, t, he, what is that? Then that's going to impact your understanding, your comprehension. So that's why we want to make sure kids have fluency and can read whole words. We also look at something called phoneme segmentation. That's what I just did. We just separated each sound. SH says sh. CH says ch, ch, and k. A lot of different sounds. We look at all reading fluency. Do we take all our sight words, our words like once and the, that we can't sound out, the words we can sound out, and other words that they might know in environment print, such as names. The word Abington, most of our kids know Abington within the second day. We talk about the word Abington all the time. They know the capital A is the giant word. I learned a big word. So we're really glad that nice pride there. But we take all that together and we see can they read so it sounds like a conversation? Because when you can read and it sounds like a conversation, you understand what you're reading about. And that understanding leads to meaning and it leads to real conversation and a sharing of ideas. And that's where discussion comes in. And that's what all this tells us from a simple little number that you might get. Rapid letter naming is to make sure, do they see their letters? And we have some funky <coughs> looking letters. Have you looked at the G's recently, the A's? Some of them have a lot of curly Q's and some don't. Depending on the kind of style that's used now and type, they have to know a lot of different ways letters look too. We want to make sure they can do that. Is there anything else from our panel here that I need to add or did we cover that well? Thank you. And when you go out into the hallway, you will see comprehension cards, vocabulary cards, we have a lot of photo cards, and a lot of photo and video tools that you'll be able to see for your own when you use your Clever when you get your information next week. In the Wonders Reading Program, you will also see that we have a lot of different materials. And these are just a list of some of the materials that are out in the hall and that you can see and your kids might talk about. All set to move on. In math, as we mentioned, we have concepts and we have procedures. Procedures are kind of the drudgery of math, aren't they? Things you just have to know so you can do the really meaty stuff. And concepts, as I mentioned earlier, with shapes, are the connections, and how do we apply it to solve a problem. So you'll see we have foam materials out in the hall, and our kids manipulate with them. And sometimes what they do doesn't work. That's okay, because they figure out, well, what do I need to do next? 
and as our staff do, we're facilitating them. We're helping them figure it out by a keyword or a quick little suggestion, but we don't give it away because we want them to try. Remember, we believe in the not yet philosophy. It's okay if you didn't know it now. You just don't know it yet, but you will. Keep trying. But we want to have that just right balance of struggle without frustration, which you want probably at home too. When you go out in the hall, you'll see we have some posters and we talk about mathematical practices. We have different things we want kids to do. We want them to have the right tool for the right job. If you've ever laid tile or built a fence, do you need a measuring cup? No, but maybe your kids don't know that. Maybe they need a tape measure. Maybe they need a hammer. Maybe they need nails. Maybe they need a screwdriver. What kind? Math is like that too. You want to have the right tool for the right job. So we have all kinds of tools. We have something called rods. They're 10 cubes glued together. We have cubes, individuals, and we have flats that are 100 cubes glued together. So they can use those to make a concrete picture in their head until they can think abstractly, oh, I know what 15 looks like. I know what 87 looks like. I can take apart and I can put them together. So that's what we do a lot of in math. And you'll see math, math. It's just a paper that they can spread out upon and they have the manipulatives. A lot of dropping goes on in the beginning because they have to learn how to manage their workspace too. Just like you have to manage your desk or your kitchen table to figure out how to use your space <coughs> and what you need and when you need it and how to share it and how to ask if you need something, which we mentioned earlier with our social emotional skills. So I'm gonna go back now because Christine Hoyt, our kindergarten teacher, is going to talk about Focus K2. In addition to learning basics, our students also work on thinking and feedback. In first and second grade, they work on how to use words to give ideas and improve what they're doing or share a struggle they're having. I want this wolf to look like a real wolf and it doesn't. I need to fix this. Can you help me? And then kids give suggestions, see what they notice, what they want to do next, and the student goes, tries it, perseveres, another one of our social skills we want them to know, and then comes back to show if an idea worked or didn't or if they adapted it. Christine's going to go over a lot more than they do in kindergarten. Before Christine dazzles you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I just, a little pressure here. It's starting to sweat. You will. Um, it's water. Can I just uh, thank our parents for um, helping us with investing your time in, in educating your children. It's really, obviously, important to all of us. And I want to thank all of our teachers for volunteering their time uh, to come and help us with this tonight. So, and I'm going to go to the next room. I just want to say that before I went. So. Bye. <laughs> So before you go, Mrs. Zinni gave you a ticket to leave. I Dr. Will. Fedorowicz has also asked if you would give a feedback survey, so you'll get two sheets of paper before you leave. <laughs> and if you could just up in the upper corner, just put Beaverbrook as you fill it out, just and then you'll be set to go. It's all good. So while she's waiting, that's okay, because she can talk about it. She just had some visuals. She can see what the classroom looked like. In class, what you do here is a lot of talking. In the hallway, we want quiet, silent way because in the classrooms lots of people are talking and lots of people are learning and we want them to hear each other. So you might see kids saying, we need to sit knee to knee so I can hear you because it's ear to ear. Right? But we don't want ear to ear. A little too close, right? All right, you're ready to go. Welcome to the land of sway. A digital tool. Exciting. So um, focus K2, I'm going to focus a little bit on kindergarten, but then we'll make connections to it going to uh, first and second grade. Um, K2 actually comes from Boston. It's actually they, K1 is their preschool, K2 is their kindergarten, and that's where this program came from. 
Um, the program is actually more of a philosophy, so I'm going to give you like a little, little tour of what the different things we do. And let's see if I can get this all going the right way. So we do centers, and the centers we do. Um, All good. So the centers that we do are um, art studio with easels and, and drawing and beautiful stuff, which is one of my favorite things. It's all our recyclables, all those little bits and pieces that you tend to throw away. They're like gold in the kindergarten classroom. Um, we have blocks, drama, listening, library, <coughs> discovery, table, um, writing, drawing, word work, and math. So there's a lot of different things going on. So there's all these areas that the kids can go to and they can pick and choose. And they're given a topic. And at this time, in kindergarten, we're doing community. But what's great about this is that these centers can also be used in first and second grade when they go um, to explore maybe a literacy topic that they're working on or a math concept. So there's a way that centers kind of carry on um, through the other grades. But I love this poem. Hopefully that will go. Um, it's, when I'm building in the block area, please don't say I'm just playing. For you see I'm learning as I play about balance and shapes. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll be a, a, an architect. So um, we start with community. We read about a story, a folk tale called Abiyoyo, which is really fun. The kids are um, asked to explore that story. So they read the story, and then they go to the centers. So they might draw Abiyoyo, who's a giant and very scary. Or they might draw the magic wand. Or they might retell the story, acting it out um, with the props and things that we use. Um, or in the blocks, they may build the village. Um, in animals, we actually challenge them to build an estuary. Now, I'm just going to be fucking honest. I had to look that up. So, um, I hadn't really heard the words. not something I was familiar with. But I'm going to tell you, I learned a lot about estuaries and salmon, the life of the salmon in an estuary. Just, you know, it's where the, the river meets the sea. Um, so it's, it's really interesting. So we ask them to build that, and they do different things. We learn the word stability. And um, it's interesting to challenge them, like, well, why isn't that working? Why is it not uh, standing straight? And, and they start using that as vocabulary. So it's building on their vocabulary. In first and second grade, you see that you hear and see the difference when they come in in the discussions, don't you? So with drama, when I'm getting dressed up, setting the table, caring for the baby, um, I'm not just playing because maybe someday there'll be a mother or father. We use um, community hubs. We have a pizza shop, and they, um, they have a grocery store. And it's those things where they are living and playing and, and, and making sense of the world around them. Um, we do a lot of retelling. And that retelling is going to help them when they're asked to retell a story in first and second grade, and they have to do it maybe um, you know, in writing. We're asking them to act it out, or we have cards and they can use the cards, the pictures, and put them into sequence. Um, and they can create their own stories. Um, we really encourage them to do a lot of uh, drawing and writing and telling stories. And one of their favorite things is when they create a story and then we act it out in class. So there's just a lot of really great vocabulary um, building during the drama time. Discovery in STEM, that's um, our science center. It's where they get to, you know, kind of get in, get dirty. Um, we have the sand, we have rice, we have beans. Um, it's a time when they can use measurement and use different tools. Um, they also, a lot of times we have, um, when we're doing the salmon, they create habitats. So when the sandbox becomes a habitat, and they use um, what they know from the stories that we've read and the conversations that we've had, you see that starting to come into play with their, um, with their discovery center. As the poem says, they're combing bushes for bugs. You can do that at home too. Take an umbrella, 
hold it upside down, take something and lightly tap a bush with the umbrella under it, all the bugs will fall in it, and then you can see them. When you're done, just flip the umbrella back over and all the bugs go back in the bushes. <laughs> Um, the art studio and beautiful stuff, um, again, that's a place for them to express themselves and, um, and it's the building block to writing. We want them to, to draw and we encourage details, like, well, where is it? We, we, you did a beautiful person, but where are they? Are they inside? Are they outside? And so as they start um, drawing and putting in those details and realizing what they need to do to express their idea, um, it will help them when in first and second grade they're asked to provide details. They'll understand that. And then, you know, it's, again, it's setting and where are they and what are they doing. And by the end of the year, they start labeling things and, and writing their stories about their pictures. Um, listening, Larry, we do that many different ways. We have stories um, that we project. We have stories on the iPads. We have, I still have the tapes. So we have those CDs. Those are on the way up too. Um, but there's many different ways that we can have them listen to a story. We also start teaching them to do the elbow to elbow, knee to knee, to start reading together, to be able to um, look at the pictures. Uh, my kids right now, we're doing wordless picture books so that they can understand that they really are readers. Um, they're reading environmental print that, you know, I tell them all, who can, who can read? And a couple might raise their hands and most of them don't. I say, no, everybody put your hands up because you all can read. And then I start holding up Dunkin' Donuts, Walmart, all those things. They have that knowledge. And so to make them feel empowered. Um, and so those are many different ways that we use the listening library get them reading, even if it's listening. So this poem was called Just Playing by Anita Wadley, and um, today I'm a child, but um, my work is play. And we have to give some credit to that playtime because it is the way they explore the world and they work out things. Um, so it might look like a lot of play in kindergarten, but we're pretty busy working hard. <laughs> So thinking and feedback is something that really carries through all the way through the grades. And thinking and feedback is a time when we come together and we look at a work of art. It might be something that somebody built, somebody drew, or somebody wrote. So I actually was like, oh, I've got to grab something. So I had this very lovely picture made for me by one of my lovely students. And so the first thing would be is that they hold it up and they ask everybody to look. And just look. Then the next part that is done quietly, everybody just looks, then it's noticing. So we talk about well, what do you notice? Anybody have anything they don't notice? The apple tree. Okay, mm -hmm. it's your hand. <laughs> Excellent. So you so you would say, and we model this, I notice that there's apple trees. So that's what you notice. That's great noticing. Does anybody notice something else? What do you notice? I notice the sun is up. You notice that the sun is up. Very good. Okay, good my boss. What else? I notice that there are two children carrying a bucket. Two children. Mm. I thought they were too, too. Yes. <laughs> I know there is a lot of blue, so it might be raining. Oh, good observation. So at this point, we ask the children to do a little noticing. Um, and then I notice, I see, that it's their turn to listen. And at that point, the child, the artist, they have the chance to tell about it. So you guys have had some ideas, and then they get to say, well, I was drawing this because I went apple picking with my sister. Mm -hmm. um, and so they do. They do tell about what they want. Now, there may still be some wondering. So people, I ask them, what do you wonder? What do you, what do you want to know more about? Do you have a question? 
That is the hardest concept to get <laughs> about. Everybody has a story. Question's a little more tricky. Um, but do you have a question? So we kind of, through this, learn about what is a question. What's your sister's name? It's not written there. So that's an excellent question. And then um, they would have the chance to respond to what their sister's name, what their name was. Um, they could ask, is it raining? Is it raining? And they would be able to respond and say, oh, if I, you know, I was really coloring it with a really blue sky. <laughs> you know, whatever the truth is about there. So they have that chance to, to, to um, have that back and forth. And it's giving the kids a chance to really look and think about editing. A lot of times we are doing something like maybe an animal and we want to see what else we could do. So the next part <coughs> is the suggestion or inspiration. This also takes a little time for us to get kind of that concept going, but a lot of times it'll be like, um, does this inspire you or do you have a suggestion? A lot of times when they get into the spring, a suggestion might be, um, maybe you could write about it or maybe you could add or you could label. Maybe you could write your sister's name. Maybe you could do things like that. So the, the suggestions are coming um, about what they might be able to do or how they might <coughs> improve or do something a little different. Um, I always model with a with a giraffe because I'm not really good with giraffes. And so I, I take their you know, suggestions. I draw a quick giraffe and then they come in and I ask them for their help. And I do it again and then I do it again and then I do it again. And after a week, they see the drawing progress. So it's really hard for children to do their masterpiece and think about redoing it. Also, somebody might be like, I would have a thing too. Maybe, maybe I will draw a picture. You know, you inspired me. We always say that to the, you know, we try to use that language. You inspired me. I'm going to draw a picture too. I went to this far. So, um, so that kind of is our kindergarten models. We get them to understand the vocabulary and the process. And then when they get to first and second, they'll use this in editing. They'll be able to use it in editing their writing. They'll be able to look at things maybe a little different. So. It really is a wonderful philosophy that really kind of helps our, our students become um, become their own learner and uh, be responsible about their own learners. Okay, yes. Think that's it? Yes. Yep. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Try to go back to yours. Right. Good. Okay. Well, that, that is very nice. So. And made with Microsoft Sway. So Sway is just another format of using PowerPoint or other tools that our kids also learn at school over time. And the focus K2, the thinking and feedback, it becomes accountable talk as the kids get older. So when they go to Woodsdale School, they're able to problem solve and talk about, well, why did you use a cylinder if you were trying to build a bridge in the middle? You think it's going to stay up and be stable. They learned all that way back. Kindergarten, first, second grade, so when they go to third and fourth and older and older and older, they take that basic and essential knowledge and they build upon it. And that's what they do. So this time, we're going to take any questions, and then after that, we're going to have you go out into the hall to look at some materials, talk with some of the staff. And we have a couple brief surveys for you to fill out if you want to know if it's helpful and how we can improve upon this for next year. Anyone have anything they want to ask out loud in the big group? Or would you rather just go to the smaller group and individually ask specific questions about reading or math or social emotional learning? Kindergarten, not a conference, but really about the programs we use. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, now, I know that you did the Focus on K2. It started. Um, couple years ago. Have you noticed since that the, uh, any changes in the first and second grade? Yes, we have. 
something, I'm sure do you may want to speak or do you want me to speak for you? So you tell me. Uh, definitely, well, we definitely noticed that the vocabulary development is huge. Um, like Mrs. Boyd said, um, when the kids come in, they're much more vocal and they're much more willing to share, which is something that we haven't seen in the past. So this is a nice growth. Nice they also know the difference between a question and a telling. <laughs> and they know to stay on topic, which is something we're working on. That if we were talking about apple picking with that picture, then that's all we're talking about. Not Minecraft, not um, Paw Patrol. We are talking about this topic because this is what this person is talking about. And that leads to better communication, and we're working on our communication skills with our students. And a lot of students are more willing to take a risk because they understand the idea of perseverance. That it's okay if I didn't do it perfect. It's not a big issue if I didn't do it perfect because I can ask someone for a suggestion or someone can offer a wondering. I wonder why you did that. Have you thought about this? Or maybe you want to make it 3D and you need a feather. Do we have any of those or what else can we use? So they're, we're noticing when they come to first grade and then to second grade, they're more in tune with it's okay if I didn't know how to do it perfectly because it's going to take a while to get it the way I want. We have noticed that, the vocabulary we're noticing a big difference with. Um, and the other piece of it was the question and answer piece, staying on topic. And finally, we also noticed that kids get interested and are inspired by other people. So some kids won't start anything because they say, I can't think of a thing, particularly in writing. I have no idea what to write about. So what we have noticed is that kids will then ask someone else, what are you writing about? Oh. I'm going to put in somebody's name too. Or we went somewhere outside too. I hadn't thought about that. And kids help each other, particularly in the writing editing piece. They'll be like, you have no periods. I can't breathe. Because they've learned I have to pause when I see one and I can't pause. I'm talking all this time. So I'll say, you need to put a period in. And then the kids will be like, where? We'll read it aloud and we'll tell you. So, or listen to it yourself. So that's what we noticed. So thank you for the question. Anyone else have anything else they want to ask at this time? I'm going to thank you all. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, are the kids going to the library? Is that yes. very so, class? So how that works is we have some volunteers who maintain our library for us. We move it into our tech lab. One of the reasons is because we start to work more on research now so that some kids will want to look in a book and find what they want. And we teach them the features of nonfiction text, captions, old words, table of contents, that type of thing. And they want to go use a computer because they want to type something from there. So the library right now, um, teachers can take their own classes to library and they can borrow books. We're not checking them out per se because we last year had several volunteers input 5,000 books with all the codes that go with them into an online service so that we eventually will be by November, we're thinking, we'll be able to scan out a book the child can take it, and then we'll know what's in and what's out. In the past, we had to write it in a notebook or a card. And if you don't know how to write a title, you pick a book with a very long title, it takes a long time to take a book out. So we're hoping to scan our books. So right now, people can come and take book collections to their rooms. They can take their class to the library and hear a story. Or they can look at a book there, but they're leaving it there or taking it to their class, not checking it out to go home. And we'll put a plug-in for the public library. Amy Hindle is wonderful. Our kids do visit the public library annually. We encourage everyone to get a library card. And you can take out more books there than you can with us. Anyone else have anything else that they've been thinking about? We are around. We encourage you to go into the hallway, to touch some materials, look at them, ask some questions. And we also hope to see you October 4th in this same building, I believe, for the um, special ed pack night, which is about anxiety and the behavior code. So you can have more information about help, how to help your child navigate the society they live in. Um, it's a great presenter and a great workshop, and it will be here in next week. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you coming out tonight, getting a babysitter or someone else with your kids. And you're out here, with some of you, right after work. Thank you very, very much. If you want to just make two piles at the end of the table and leave your surveys, I'll come by and collect them when you're done.
Um, up in the upper right corner of the longer sheet of paper, just write beaver work on it for us. That would be helpful. Thank you. I don't.